Hello everyone, welcome back to Blockman Editor Tutorial. In these videos, we will give you a complete introduction to the Blockman Editor. When we are making a game, if we need to limit the number of players, or set the duration for waiting for players to enter, or adjust the player's spawn position, we can set them in basic settings from the game settings. Launch the editor, click the game settings button in the upper right corner. Open the game settings window, we can see the basic settings. By setting, number of players, we can control the amount of players, that can join the game. For example, we set the lower limit to 2, and the upper limit to 3. This means that our game requires a minimum of 2 people to start, and a maximum of 3 players to join the game. Note that the game will only start, when the number of players in a room, is greater than or equal to the minimum number of players. When the game starts, if the number of people in the room has not reached the maximum limit and the attribute can join in progress, check, then the player can join a game that has already started. However, if you leave the attribute can join in progress and check, then the player cannot join the game that has already started. The data save property is the switch for saving global game data. With this property, we can record the player's game progress, save items that players have obtained and implement similar functions. Only when this property is checked, the saving function of items, variables, buffs and other objects will take effect. Here we take items as an example. Check save item and the properties of the item and see the effects. When we enter the game for the first time, pick up three items. When we enter the game for the second time, the function of saving items will only take effect. If the data save attribute is checked, and have the items stored in our backpack. If the data save attribute is not checked, the props in the backpack are not there. Regarding the backpack capacity, this function is used to set number of slots in the player's backpack. Here we adjust the backpack capacity to 18. Let's give it a run and check the effect. In the basic settings, we can adjust duration of the waiting period before the game starts. The waiting phase can be divided into three periods, duration for waiting for players to enter, duration for waiting for game start, and countdown to game start. Duration for waiting for players to enter refers to the amount of time. A player waits before the player enters a game room. If the number of players in the room has not reached the minimum number of players, by the end of this period, the player will re-enter the matching stage. Duration for waiting for game start is the period of time for players to prepare. After the previous matchmaking phase is over, countdown to game start is the countdown prompt, displayed once the player's preparation stage is over and lasts till the game officially starts. Regarding the spawn point and spawn position, they are both used to specify the coordinates where the player entity is spawned in the map. The difference is that the spawn point is where the player is after entering the game. During matchmaking and preparation phases, the spawn position is the coordinate where the player entity is generated after the matchmaking and preparation phases are over. Pay attention here, countdown to game start will begin. After the player entity is generated at the spawn point, which is different from duration for waiting for players to enter and duration for waiting for game start. When we use the spawn point and spawn position, we must determine the map or the player entity will be generated in the void and cannot join the game normally. When choosing spawn coordinates, there are two methods. One is to directly click the button behind the coordinates and locate on the map. The other is to fill in specific coordinate values. You can give it a try yourself. Let's use a scenario to specifically understand the time sequence of the waiting phase. Create two random terrains. The desert terrain as the spawn point. And the volcano terrain as the spawn position. Set duration for waiting for players to enter to 10 seconds, duration for waiting for game start to 5 seconds, and countdown to game start to 3 seconds. Then enter the running mode. In the beginning, the player is born at the spawn point, and then starts the matchmaking phase. 
The duration for waiting for players to enter is over, when the number of people in the room does not reach the minimum number of people in the game, it will re-enter the matching stage. Since the minimum number of people required for the room is 2, we go back to the editor and click the button to the right of the run to add another player entity. At this point, a game is successfully matched, and we enter the preparation phase. When the duration for waiting for game start is over, the player entity will be teleported to the spawn position first, and then enter countdown to game start. When the countdown is over, the game officially begins. In the basic settings, we can also set the total duration of the game. Game time is used to set the duration of each game. When the game time has run out, the game server will kick all players out of the room after a short delay and shut down the game room. The editor's default game time is limitless. If you want to set the game time, you need to uncheck the box after the unlimited game time, then we can adjust the game time. Here we set the game time to 10 seconds to check the effect. Finally, let's look at the scene time. Scene time is used to set whether the time in the game will elapse. By default, the editor helps us lock the scene time at 7.40 and will not elapse. Scenario initial time is used to set the time of the game scene when the player enters the game scene. If you want to enable in-game time lapse, you need to uncheck the box after the lock scenario time. A day in the game is 24 hours, but not the same as the flow of time in the real world. We can set the scenario one day time corresponds to reality, so that we can control the speed of the time flow. For example, we set the scenario one day time to be 300 seconds per day, and the scenario initial time to 6 o'clock. In order to allow everyone to clearly see the passage of time, where we also need to adjust the skybox. Click on map 001 to enter the skybox properties view. Adjust the skybox switch. Method to skybox is subject to time frame switch. Then add three skyboxes, each using three sets of preset textures. Set the switching time to 7 a.m. 12 a.m. and 19 p.m. and set the switching duration to 1. Enter run mode. We can see that the sky box is slowly switching over time. That's all for this video. We hope it can help you on your way to a great creator. If you want to know more about the editor, you can comment below the video or post on the official forum. See you in the next video.